Hi everyone. In this video, I want to talk about the counterpoint function, this fellow right here. And I want to do that because, well, I haven't talked about it before, but also it recently got an update making it even more powerful than it was. And this update, if we do a command D to look uh, to search for this function, um, we are now able to uh, set an orchestra to, to specify all the instruments of an orchestra. I guess this is better shown perhaps in Counterpoint 6 example, which I would recommend to check out. Here at the beginning, we define all the instruments we want to use for our orchestra. Then we can pass them into the counterpoint function to use only certain instruments um, for a certain counterpoint section, which is very powerful. And it uh, allows you to work with lots and lots of instruments in a very convenient way. This, this score is uh, just a few lines. Um, it's a complete orchestral piece. So very powerful. I didn't use that feature, however, um, so you can check it out there. Um, but I do have some other stuff to show you. So generally, when we work with the counterpoint function, we want to have some patterns that we start with, some inputs. And you can create these um, manually, as I did, or you can use some random functions. Um, I just decided to write them out. I have a couple here, um, just three different patterns. This one. This one. And the last one. So very simple, all of them four bars in length. I started with that. I transposed them down uh, just because um, I, I transposed them down to C. They're all in D so that um, it's a little bit more visible. It, it forces us to, have, to use the tonality here so we can see very clearly uh, what we are doing in terms of modulation, etc. So here for the first line of the counterpoint, function. Well, first we pass in the patterns, right? And then we get to the first group of four bars. And there I'm only using the third voice. So this is how you pass in your voices. And if I go to the MIDI of this, you can see that in fact, it does indeed start with only a bass line. Then for the second line here, I'm using voice one and three. That's this one, adding the violas. And then uh, we have all three voices right here which would be this section. This, this one here is how I wrote the patterns, just four bars. So what to do from there, right? Well, the main power here are the methods. And with methods, we are changing our rhythmic pitch or velocity um, material. So the first method I'm using here is T12, which transposes the second voice up by an octave. Then if we go to the next uh, four bars, we use more transposes uh, for the first two voices. And one of the voices we transpose to the fifth, seven semitones up. Um, and all of this is still in natural minor with the root set to D. Um, we map the, um, the pitches to the octave. So this tonality, this is a tonality map function and it will map your sequences to something that you specify here. And be because I choose map octave, it will um, map them to the octave as specified in the original pattern and uh, map them to the closest tone, um, which is above the, the uh, comparison. So that's our first um, 16 bars, I guess. And then after that, we go into a modulation. And this is very easy, easy to do. We simply set the tonality to a new, uh, a new key, basically. So here I'm modulating to major and to A4. So we're modulating to the fifth of the key. And the rest basically stays the same, except that we also use this method RA, which stands for retrograde all. Now, if you're confused where I get these methods from, we can actually go to, let's open the side panel and go to unfold. And we have an unfold set here. I think I've shown this before, where we have very handy shorthand um, functions for basically built in um, longer functions. So for example, if we search for LD22, which I already did, we can find it very easily. We can see that this is a length divide function and we can again do a command D to look into that function and see what it does. So we can see, okay, this divides the number of lengths. This one 
is fairly self-explanatory. So um, this is how we how we find and use our methods. Of course, we can also define our own. But uh, yeah, take a take a look at this file. There's many, many, many already defined that you can use in your counterpoint function, uh, dealing with pitches, velocities, uh, etc. So that's what we have here. Then we go uh, further. Here we go to a new tonality. In this case, we specify a custom tonality by just providing the pitches. Um, then here we do some more length divides. Here we do some more length divides. Here we transpose um, by five semitones. R is just a retrograde. Um, and we have here our length augmentation. So we can see in the very last, um, very last part of the uh, counterpoint, um, what we're doing is the first voices, um, the first voice here gets divided and retrograded. So it will be twice as fast, basically. And uh, the lower voices, they get augmented, so they will be slower. And um, we can see that if we scroll down a little bit further, we can see here the methods being applied, transposing some stuff, transposing down again. We can see here the last section before the uh, build up, the top voice is uh, much faster, and the lower voice uh, here, actually, the lower voice gets um, slower, just long, long whole bar notes, basically. Um, so this piece, I actually haven't explained what I wanted to do here, but I wanted to show this counterpoint function, and I also wanted to show some electronic stuff, and I went with sort of a drum and bass kind of style. Now, normally I would play this piece at the beginning of the video so that you can hear what we're working with. Um, but since this, it's a bit of a longer piece, I will play it at the end of the video. So if you want to take a listen, just go there and, uh, and then you can revisit here. Uh, for now, <laughs> we'll just be looking at it. So basically, that's our counterpoint intro. Then we get into a build-up right here with more sound design going on. A second part to the build-up. And then we get into the main section right here with some uh, more activity in the drums and stuff like that. All right, so that's for our counterpoint. Now, um, this just takes quite some experimentation, I guess. Um, I got help from this from Stefan, as known by most Opus Motors users. Um, uh, he's, he's really an expert with this function. And one additional thing that I liked was that I was simply able to copy my text, send him a message and say, hey, can you look at this? And he made some changes to that, quite some changes. And this is another, it made me realize, wow, okay, <laughs> normally if you have like a logic project or something like this, or you deal with MIDI files, you have to export, um, make sure that someone has like the same program if you send the project file. and. With Opus Modus, the shareability of your musical ideas um, is great. You can you can simply send a text message. Someone can send it back, and it will work right away. You just paste it in. That was a very nice, very nice thing. So after the counterpoint, um, I wanted to do some more things. And one thing that I wanted is the velocities to go up as the um, as the section progresses. So to do that, I'm uh, first counting the notes in each of the different parts. So you can see that the violas have 186 notes, um, and or that's the sorry, that's the violin, the violas, and the bass, and then. I'm using that count to create uh, ramp values, basically, um, which allows us to, um, like, let's let's take a look at the ramp. So I created this ramp, and I wanted the velocities to follow this path, but every note should have a velocity, of course. So we're mapping this to the total number of um, notes that we have for that specific part. And then I get that through a vector range function. So with that, if we evaluate this, this should have the 186 values, um, all of different velocities starting at 0 0.2 and ending at 1.0. And then for my lower voices, I use a little bit of a smaller range right here. It's a very effective way to see those, um, or to map those velocities, which we'll later be able to see inside uh, Logic when we when we start to record this piece. Um, so we have this. That's um, This looks a little bit tricky. Uh, I did explain the ramp and the scale ramp function in a previous video, so I would recommend to check that out as well. And then we get into our um, dictum, basically. So first we, we um, assemble the whole voice and we can evaluate this. We can see we have the velocity values. These are all the 
um, all the floating values we have the note um, and we have the lengths of the notes um, but I wanted to do some additional stuff and to do that a very nice function to use is the dictum. The dictum allows us very similar to the counterpoint to set up um, rules or to simply specify methods. So it allows you to do very broad things such as I'm doing right here. So here I'm saying every note within a duration of an 8 or a 16th will become a marcato. And here I'm doing something way more specific where I say, all right, I want in bar 26, the second note should be in A5. So with the dictum, it's, you use it to sort of fine tune, fine tune the outcome of your counterpoint, um, which gives you an incredible amount of control. Like one thing I'm doing here is I'm transposing the pitch by 12 um, for the last four bars of the piece. Uh, I could have done that in the counterpoint itself, but sometimes it's handy to do stuff like this a little bit later. Um, so these are the dictum rules and the nice thing with this is that these dictum methods uh, they are the same so if we look at the dictum um, documentation right here we can see that we can use some logic um, um, there's many examples here of how to do specific things to specific events for example if a note is uh, forte make it piano or whatever all right so this is um, the main thing I want to show you. The rest I'm going to go over a little bit quicker. Um, I have quite some instruments for this. I'm um, using a fair amount of just regular notation here. Let's see if we go down, if we can find something else that I wanted to explain. Uh, yeah, this one I also want to explain. So here what I'm uh, doing is using a polygon rhythm function, which I showed many times before, uh, to create a rhythm. And then since that is uh, pretty random right now, I'm using various random functions, I want to force that to a time signature. So that everything becomes um, a 2-4. And then I'm uh, generating breaks or pauses for specific sections. So the sections we can find here. So you can see that every other bar, so we have 0, then we miss 1, then we have 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. So this will create pauses in those bars. So if we now evaluate this, you can see there's a bar of rest in between every of these notes and I did that because I wanted to create sort of a call and response kind of feeling and we'll hear that later in the in the drums as well if we go down a little bit we have here some basses we have some uh, synths syncopated some simply some chords that we're building up um, this is also a build-up section So here with Gen Dynamic, I'm able to create um, in total 64 dynamic values between pianissimo and forte. So that's what you see there. That's just used um, prior to uh, to a new section to sort of lead into it. Um, and then we get to our drums here. And for our drums, I'm also I really love to use the uh, polygon rhythm function. And I'm doing the same here with the Gen Pause. So I'm using the same pauses. So if we have our drums. Um, let's just listen to it as piano rather than drums. I again create a time signature out of that and then I use my gen pass to pass this every other bar. Right, um, so with that we are reaching the end of the piece where we are assembling everything. Then I use again my ramp functions to create some automation and then we go into the score itself. So let's actually listen to the score. Um, I will switch to Logic where I have all my instruments uh, set up. I know, I mean, there's um, these are all the red ones are the ones that I'm going to be recording into the other ones are just doubles that I might want to use later um, but yeah I'll just do a record here then evaluate my score you can hear what it sounds like um, and 
then <laughs> I will, uh, nothing remains then. Thanking you for uh, watching this video. I hope you uh, find some new cool tricks in there. Um, I will try to share the code with the video as well. And um, I will see you in a next video.